Hello guys, I've been kind of running my own AI research lab in the last few weeks and here are the things I learned. The bitter lesson, this is really good blog post. It says that dumb scaling, massive compute scaling with the general neural network algorithms and learning and general search algorithms outperform specific handcrafted human inject injected knowledge. So basically, if you want to create a chess AI, in the beginning, maybe putting in human rules and heuristics is better. But eventually, when you get more compute, then you just do big search and neural networks and it wins against these handcrafted heuristics and rules. So that's the bitter lesson because it's ugly. It means like all of our human knowledge and expertise becomes irrelevant and we just need a bunch of compute and search and neural network learning. But actually, we still need to design general good algorithms. So in research, we need to research the general good algorithms. Don't research specific solutions to specific problems, but general alg algorithms. That's why I like the new deep sea sparse attention uh, paper. It's very general. It's just like how to pay attention, how to improve transformers in general. New paper by DeepMind also confirms this. VO3, the big general text to video, video generation model with massive compute from Google can replace all of the specific models for specific video tasks. So it can do modeling, manipulation, reasoning, perception, segmentation here, edge detection, super resolution. You remember that we have custom trained AI models that are made to convert low quality image into high quality image. And it turns out that VO3 actually does it better. And it's just general model with a lot of compute, very general learning algorithm. I don't know if it does search or not. Uh, maybe if it doesn't do search, then when it starts doing search, it will become even better. Another thing I learned, and this will all come together in the end, uh, the main goal of this field is automated AI research. So AI models that do AI research. And I heard Demis Hassab is CEO of Google DeepMind is working very hard on this as well. Those will be general. So for example, cursor coding IDE can do automated AI research and I'm using it. Um, it's not so end to end still, it's maybe five to 10 years until that happens. But if we wanna build that, we need to go for general models with a lot of compute machine learning and big search algorithms, as opposed to heuristic rule-based human knowledge injection ways, specific ways. So that could be like a meta goal of my research. Uh, but at the same time, I would work on that and I would work on another project. So this other project could be, for example, training GPT-4 level model for less than $100 in pre-training in, uh, pre compute. So I'm still trying to figure out the right direction. Uh, some people like uh, Jan Lekun would say like we shouldn't do LLMs, uh, big labs, do that and there is nothing we can contribute. But I don't think so or even the research we would do, it's not just about LLMs, it's about muon optimizer optimizers, it's about CUDA kernels, GPU compute, training data, attention, transformers. So it's LLMs is just like one part of it. And also we don't have like decades of experience to be able to sniff out something that nobody else knows. So I guess like LLM research or transformer optimizer research uh, would be something that everybody does. And so we know it's good. And if we do some progress there, it's going to help everybody anyways. So there are multiple different types of AI research labs. There are four types that I figured out fully closed, like OpenAI and Tropic. Then um, as open as possible while having frontier models. So that would be DeepSeq. Then we have even more open labs that don't have a uh, frontier model because they are so open, they don't have competitive advantage and they cannot raise money. Uh, those labs that I know are in the US, so it could also be the case that uh, talent in China is more affordable and, and more available. So that's why DeepSeek is able to open a lot and still hire people. And this is the fourth type. This is fully completely open. This is like a, on Discord. Discord server, they do all of the research, they publish actually good papers. But here, uh, one problem would be is they cannot uh, get enough compute. I think like 
in comparison to DeepSeq. But again, I'm not sure if DeepSeq, if they can have compute because of their strategy, if they would have same compute in the US uh, because the talent stuff is there more expensive. So out of those four types of labs, I see DeepSeq as maybe the best because uh, they are as open as possible while having the frontier model. So maybe that way they actually uh, create most advancement and development to science and technology and AI research. So I see my future of my research company or lab in this kind of way where we pay employees uh, to do research because otherwise people would just get, uh, would just give up when it gets tough if they're not paid. And at the same time, opening as much as possible like DeepSeek. So they're actually opening a lot more than other labs like Alibaba as well, because DeepSeek is opening their training infrastructure as well. I also think DeepSeek is not utilizing like social media. Uh, their CEO, uh, Liang Wenfeng, is uh, maybe more introverted and uh, doesn't have so public uh, face. So one advantage of YouTube, like YouTube channels like mine is we can train our own talent. We don't need to pay for premium talent. We can create our own talent over multiple years, especially if we open source stuff and maybe even create daily lessons. This just needs to be kind of balanced with like ability to fundraise and get compute because compute is extremely important. The bitter lesson, the bitter lesson that I don't like. <laughs> but I'm still thinking it's possible to utilize this open source community to both raise funds, have frontier model and create like daily lessons and reports on what you're doing and teach people. So like open source everything. And then general community would also help do some uh, research and contribute to our technology as well. The path forward here would be, well, I already have some uh, compute by Novita AI. They gave me some compute. Uh, I can use that compute to train small models. Here I wrote some blogs like on training in FP4 and deep seek sparse attention. This is actually very good. I think we can utilize this research. This uh, maybe the first goal would be to train L GPT-4 level LLM with under $100 of pre-training. This would take a few years. This would be like an ultimate goal. I'm still thinking about this. And then at the same time, we have our meta goal of creating AI researcher, automated AI researcher. So that's just... Uh, because one problem with my YouTube that I noticed is uh, there is too many like research papers and I don't know which one to read. And I need to have like a mechanism of selecting the best research. And I also think like I want to create new knowledge, not just read papers. Uh, paper reading is good if you're beginning, but now I want to also create new knowledge. Check out this video. It actually analyzes these uh, open source AI research Discord servers. And like open source AI research projects, it's actually a very good video. It has like so few views. I'm watching this like still. The author is on my Discord, so you can chat with him as well. So that's what I'm thinking right now. We need to like have stakeholders fundraising product at the same time, if possible, which I really want to do every day, publish like what we did yesterday, like all of the research, everything. And we still want to have the frontier model like DeepSeek. So, um, I don't know if it's going to take like five, 10 years. So this is possible or whether this is possible or not. Um, but that's what I'm thinking right now. So if you go to this blog post here, deep seek sparse attention and click here, join open research on deep seek sparse attention, uh, this GitHub page is where I'm posting. So this could actually be the architecture of the LLM for training GPT-4 level LLM under $100 of free training, which is going to take like a few years, uh, probably. But anyways, I could uh, create like research questions here, literally the experiments I'm doing. Uh, for example, here research questions. Why do we need this extra weight? And what's happening if we change it, if we don't have it, etc. So these are like easy questions that can be done like in a day by people. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm community like somebody wants to do research and it's like they need to do it like for two months and uh, like these research small questions they can be done in a day and people can contribute anyways my biggest problem right now is knowing if i actually want to do this particular research uh which i think it's good so this uses deep seek sparse attention and um, uh, glm4 mixture of experts uh, are those the best probably that's what i know that are best for now. 
uh, for example, here, we can also do research on optimizers, spin on optimizers. So I got these two, I can add one more or a few more as well. But then I imagine since this would take like a few years, I would like make like I would get investment and funding in less than a than a few years. Um, but those things will come as we do like research. And when I say we, it's mainly me right now. But there are some people who actually do research as well in our community. Okay, I don't want to just talk anymore. So that's going to be it for this video. And uh, join Discord and see you next time.